um, at the children's, during the children's sermon, we're all going to learn a little bit more about St. Patrick's Day, so I know you're all excited about that. Um, we have people to pray for in your bulletins. Please look at that. Um, I want to announce that, just a reminder, so there's a big, I think it's plastic, barrel back there that is to collect change or money for Liz Blakely, who is um, going overseas um, this summer. And this is, uh, we want to turn that money in to her by the end of the month. So next Sunday will be the last Sunday that we're going to collect it. It doesn't have to be change. You can put checks in, um, paper money in there too for her. Um, and we can all participate and assist with that mission trip. Brenda, yes? She's going to Thailand. She's going to Thailand. For two months. For two months. Okay. Thank you. Let's see. Pastor Bongolin had his first treatment Wednesday, I think. Wednesday, his first chemo treatment. He'll be doing 10 treatments. I don't know the frequency. Last time it was every other week. I don't know. It probably kind of depends on how he's feeling. Um, I He did let me know that his side effects were less severe than the last time. So there's an answer to prayer and just prayers for healing for him. <clears throat> and I know there's many people who are being treated for illnesses and um, significant treatments. So please keep all those people in your prayers. Uh, Krista, I saw Krista has a birthday this week. Um, Krista's birthday is Friday. Do we have any other birthdays this week to celebrate? Or anniversaries? All right. Okay. So when you see Trista, tell her happy birthday. Does anyone have any other announcements? Yes, Deb. Um, choir practice will be this Wednesday night at 5 o'clock. Okay. And we're going to be practicing for Palm Sunday, through the Wednesday, and Good Friday, and Easter. Okay. So this Okay, so the choir is going to begin practicing again, and they're going to... Oh, just, just okay, okay. The choir is having a practice this Wednesday at 5 o'clock, and that will be to prepare for the Palm Sunday service, the Good Friday service, and Easter. So, note that we will be having services on all those special days. And the flowers today are the memory of Doug Ralston and Henry Okay, so the flowers on the altar are in memory of Doug Ralston. And it's good to see Butch here today again. I know she's just continued prayers for healing for Butch, that she could be completely healed. Okay, so let's um, prepare our hearts. Yes, Jeff. Sorry, guys. I'm not listening to you. That's not unusual. <laughs> <laughs> this is my husband, if you don't know. <laughs> I have a quick word uh, a minute ago to do an Easter breakfast starting at 30 on Easter morning, and it's just a sign-up sheet for stuff that we need, and there's an envelope behind the sign-up sheet if you prefer to give some money. Um, you know, full disclosure, this thing doesn't even make it all the way around before it's full, so um, I'm not going to use the money for buying groceries, but we'll use it uh, for what it is that we collect during our meal. Thank you. All right. So we're going to have an Easter breakfast. It starts at 7.30 on Easter morning, and the men, um, traditionally, the men, it's the men's breakfast, and thank you to all the men in advance for helping with that. And if you have any questions, you can talk to the big guy in the Hawkeye shirt there. It's my husband. Um, all right. That's always a, a really good get-together time to start our Easter celebrations with the breakfast. All right, so now let's prepare our hearts for worship. <laughs> Thank you. 
self-centering words. God has written the laws of love on your heart. Gaze deeply and find God within. And now, please join with me to call to worship. Are you feeling tired and worn out? Call on the name of the Lord. Are mistakes from the past weighing you down? Come to the front of living water. Are you the person you wish to be? See God's help and it shall be granted. Are you looking for a better path? Ask Christ to show you the way. Come, let us worship. Please bow your heads. Our souls are troubled, Holy One, until they find their rest in you. When we live in fear of our mortality, help us face the future unafraid. Write the truth of Christ's words on our hearts. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it can only be a single seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. In our living and in our dying, draw us together with all of your people. Amen. Now, please stand if you're able for our opening hymn, Take Time to Be Holy.
Let's start with, today is a holiday. Does anybody, do you know what today St. is? St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. And then it's going to be Easter. And then it's going to be Easter, you're right. That would be fun, won't it? That's a great holiday. Easter eggs. Easter eggs, yes, that would be fun. Well, St. Patrick's Day is today, and do you know what St. Patrick's Day, how it started? No? Well, St. Patrick was actually, we think that he's from, that he was Irish, because green stands for the country of Ireland. But actually, he was from England, and he was sent to Ireland to spread the message of Jesus Christ. But he was actually from England. So St. Patrick's Day was first celebrated 500 years ago. And it started in the United States by Emish immigrants who wanted to gather. So the people from Ireland who traveled over to the United States, they wanted to like get together once a year and celebrate their Irish heritage. They were proud to be Irish people. And so that's kind of where there's going to be a, a parade downtown in Cedar Rapids. You might have seen it like on the television or something. And so that's what it's celebrating, okay? Yeah. Okay, so this is a plant of mine. I have history of bringing plants to children's sermon. This one isn't doing too bad. Do you, this is called a shamrock plant. It's, it's looking, it looked really good in the house, and then I put it in a bag. And now it obviously got a little cold. And it flowers, you see. And when you, let me try to do this here. So it has three leaves. And you can find little shamrock plants for three petals, I guess it would be. Yeah, well, there's lots of, lots of, like, stems. And then each one, it is, it's a little sad there. So... There's, have you ever heard of being lucky? Yeah. yeah. And like if you find a four leaf clover, it's supposed to be luck. And you can, um, you can find four leaf clovers, but they're really hard to find. And some people think that that is lucky if you find a four leaf clover. And what I want to tell you is we don't need luck in our lives with God beside us to help us and be with us. I love your nails. They're, so those of you who can't see, they're blue and sparkly, and yours are purple and sparkly, and yours are beautifully natural. Natural, right? All right. No, no. You don't get, you don't need nail polish. I don't need nail polish either, but it's beautiful. Oh, I see a little chip, a little chip. They're beautiful. Yes. Okay, so some people think, so my husband, for instance, thinks that he is unlucky to the Iowa men's basketball team. So every time we would watch the Iowa men's basketball team, they would often lose. And so Jeff and I don't watch it anymore because he thinks by not watching, they might do better. But that's not the way it works, no. So God is always beside us to help us through any situation. And it isn't luck, being lucky or unlucky, that makes good things or bad things happen. God is always in control and he's always beside us to help us out, okay? So don't be concerned about luck. You can celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Thank goodness for St. Patrick that went to Ireland to bring Christianity there. And just know that God is always in charge and you don't need to be scared. What? Oh, can you do that with your mouth? Wow. All right. So we, we can just always just know that God's with you, okay? And he is going to take care of you, okay? All right. Can we say prayer? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hold your hands. Dear God. We are so thankful that you are always beside us through good times and bad times, and you are always in control. Thank you so much for loving us. Amen. Amen. Wasn't that nice? Yeah, first. So, prayers? Prayers can be long or short.
It doesn't matter. Because God is just really happy that you're talking to him. So maybe time for him. All right. Yeah. Let's do something. Let's do one, one sucker. Any praises? Does anybody have any praises? Or you can show Colorado how to play ball. Who can show Colorado? 
What's that? I said Oregon showed Colorado how to play ball yeah. yesterday. Uh, for those who enjoy sports, I think sports in general are just kind of a way to, um, hopefully if they win, you'll find joy in life. Um, uh, just a little bit of enjoyment, I think, that God's created for us. So I know we're going to have tournaments coming up, and um, it's fun to watch those that we're cheering for, isn't it? Hopefully. Hopefully it's a good experience. All right. Sun is out. We're getting closer to warmer weather, and that's a blessing. Um, hopefully no more snow this year. That would be nice. But prayers for rain. I think, I think we you know, definitely need rain. All right, please bow your heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this day just thankful for all the blessings that you give us. We pray for those who need your healing, for Pastor Bongolin. Um, be with Rich Blakely as he has his tests and ease his anxiety. Help us all to be motivated to take care of our own health. We pray for those who have lost loved ones who need your comfort. Help them remember the, the good memories. Lord, we just pray for um, the entire world, really. Um, all those who are fighting and at war um, protect protect the people lord um, help provide peace to the world you know that's a a really big ask but um lord give the world peace we pray for those who couldn't be with us today because they're either traveling or um, perhaps not feeling well Lord, just help us to always remember that it is not luck, but you that cares for us, that guides us, that's by our side through good times and bad. And Lord, now we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now we will have our Old Testament reading. I'm reading from Job chapter 1, verses 6 through 12. And I encourage you to read the chapter of Job. Um, after you hear how the chapter starts, you'll find out that Job was severely challenged as um, bad things continued to happen to him. And you can see how it all turns out. Um, that Job was faithful and God was faithful. Job chapter 1, 6 through 12. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your hand. 
only against him, do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. And you'll see in Job how um, Satan um, takes control of Job's life and how it all turns out. Praise the word of the Lord. Amen. So what are apologetics? 
Put simply, apologetics are the intellectual defense of faith. Had I known these, the proverbial trump card question of why do bad things happen to good people when speaking with a non-believer would not have been as earth-shattering as it was for me close after my confirmation at age 17. I contemplated this question for, admittedly, way too short of a time. And being the rebellious type of that age, I took this new secular worldview and ran with it. Ignorant and confident, awful combination, by the way, I thought Christianity was finished. I mean, why has no one answered that question? Huge hint, the answer has been given repeatedly for almost as long as time has existed. Uh, quite an ironic joke for young Michael to find out later. So what do Christian apologetics, or the intellectual defense of faith, say about why bad things happen to good people? Why should we have to suffer? Before we get into that, let's take a step back first and talk about Job. Our scripture reading sets the scene for us. God has given Job an amazing life, and Satan has come to God to test Job, stating he is only faithful because of all that God has given to him. For some of you, you already know where I'm going with this. For those who really know their book, you will have known where I was going with this just on the scripture reading alone in the name of this message. But let us recap the book of Job and the story. The book of Job stands as a remarkable story of profound suffering and unwavering faith. Job, a wealthy and righteous man, is introduced as blameless and upright, enjoying the favor of God. However, in a conversation between God and Satan, Job becomes the subject of a test. Satan challenges Job's faith to God, arguing that his righteousness is solely a result of God's blessings. God permits Satan to afflict Job, Job's suffering. In a sudden and devastating series of events, Job loses his livestock, his servants, all ten of his children, and yet in the midst of this overwhelming tragedy, Job utters the words of acceptance and worship, quoting Job chapter 1, verse 21. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. But Job does not always keep this attitude when it comes to his situation. Here is an excerpt from Job chapter 10, verses 1 through 22. This is Job speaking. I loathe my life. I will give free utterance to my complaint. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say to God, do not condemn me. Let me know why you contend against me. Does it seem good to you for you to oppress, to despise the work of your hands and favor the schemes of the wicked? Do you have eyes of flesh? Do you see as humans see? Are your days like the days of mortals, or your years like human years, that you seek out my inequity and search for my sin? Although you know that I am not guilty, and there is no one to deliver out your hand, your hands fashioned and made me, and now you turn and destroy me. Remember that you fashioned me like clay, and you will turn me to dust again. Did you not pour me out like milk and curdle me like cheese? You clothed me with skin and flesh and knit me together with bones and sinews. You have granted me life and steadfast love, and your care has preserved my spirit. Yet these things you hid in your heart. I know that this was your purpose. If I sin, you watch me, and do not acquit me of my iniquity. If I am wicked, woe to me. If I am righteous, I cannot lift my head, for I am filled with disgrace, and look upon my affliction. Old as a lion, you hunt me. You repeat your exploits against me. You renew your witnesses against me and increase your vexation toward me. You bring fresh troops against me. Why did you bring me forth from the womb? With that I had died, for any eye had seen me, and were as though I had not been carried from the womb to the grave. Are not the days of my life few? Let me alone, that I may find a little comfort before I go, never to return to the land of gloom and deep darkness, the land of gloom and chaos, where life is as darkness. You can see from these words, words uh, Job is expressing something almost all of us must endure at some point in our lives. Suffering for reasons we do not know. 
suffering to those who have done nothing to deserve it. My grandmother was one of the best persons I've ever known in my entire life. She was a light in mine and our family's life always, but cancer struck her, and although she beat it bravely initially, uh, it came back and she lost her battle, her final battle to it uh, about 10 years ago. It is during these times our faith is tested, when having faith is hard to do, when we question why are these things happening to us? Have we not been faithful? Have we not led righteous lives? Why would God allow these things to happen to us? I hope you are wanting to know how God responds to Job from the passage before, because he does respond to Job, quite ethically, I might add. In the book of Job, God speaks out of a literal whirlwind with these words. Who is that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched the measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together, and all the angels shouted for joy, will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Let him who accuses God answer him. Job then responds, I am unworthy. How can I reply to you? I put my hand over my mouth. I spoke once, but I have no answer. Twice, but I will say no more. Here's God again. Would you discredit my justice? Would you condemn me to justify yourself? Do you have an arm like God's and a voice like thunder? Then go ahead, adorn yourself with glory and splendor, and clothe yourself in honor and majesty. Unleash the fury of your wrath. Look at all who are proud and bring them low. Look at all who are proud and humble them. Crush the wicked where they stand, bury them all in dust together, shroud their faces in the grave. Job replies, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now and I will speak. I will question you and you shall answer me. My ears have heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore I despise myself and I repent in dust and ashes. The story of Job transcends its historical and cultural context, offering reflections for us on the nature of suffering, the mystery of God's ways, and the importance of unwavering faith in the face of life's uncertainties. Job's journey from prosperity to profound suffering and ultimate restoration serves as a reminder of the complexities inherent in our experience and the abiding faith that can sustain individuals even through the darkest of times. I implore all of us to remind ourselves of Job during our times when our faith is being tested by the simple phrase, why are these bad things happening to good people? Truly we do not know because we are not God. Finally, to answer a non-believer who may be going through an awful time, if Christians are asked if there is a God, why would he allow suffering? Here's, my, here's our answers, our defense, our apologetics to this. Number one, it's free will. The concept of free will is a fundamental aspect of God's design. God granted us the ability to make choices, including the choice to do both good and evil. Consequently, the existence of suffering is linked to the misuse of free will by individuals, and it's the collective consequence of our human choices. Free will emphasizes personal responsibility and the inherent consequences of human actions. Number two, the fallen nature of the world. Our disobedience led to the introduction of sin and suffering into the world. The brokenness and imperfections in the world are a result of this fallen state, affecting all aspects of existence. Bad things happen to good people as a consequence of living in a fallen world separated from our original state of perfection in the Garden of Eden. Next, the redemptive purpose of suffering. Suffering is an opportunity for growth in our faith and a potential deepening relationship with God. 
God can use adversity to refine and strengthen individuals spiritually, leading to a greater understanding of His grace and mercy. This is especially true during the Lenten season. I do not need to remind all of you the suffering Jesus Christ went through, and it is our suffering that we have an opportunity to draw ourselves closer to Christ. Number four, <clears throat> trust in God's sovereignty. We trust in God's sovereignty and providence, even in the faces of unseemingly unjust suffering. God is all-knowing and has a purpose for everything, including suffering. While the reasons may not always be immediately apparent, we trust that God is working out his plan for the greater good. This, ultimately, is the story of Job. Number five, the hope of eternal life. As believers, we have eternal life that transcends earthly suffering. The belief in the resurrection and the promise of a future without pain and sorrow provides comfort and context to the suffering experienced in this life. So, why do bad things happen to good people? Why must we suffer? We don't know why God chooses good people to endure suffering, but we know he has a plan for it, and we will continue to believe the plan to be of his wisdom. We believe now, tomorrow, and forever. Will you join me? Stand if you're able for a closing hymn. We sing verses 1, 3, and 4 of God will take her.